What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Captive State, new movie out, trailer that I had seen a couple times. It looked interesting. It almost felt like it was in the same universe as 10 Cloverfield Lane, um, you know, or Cloverfield, kind of like that same alien invasion kind of. And, of course, John Goodman's in it, which, kind of, you know, gives that feel as well. Uh, but it's a sci-fi movie, John Goodman, uh, Aliens Invade, uh, the, U- the world and they're extracting they occupy the u.s the the world and they are extracting uh minerals and they're you know f- doing their alien fracking and uh humans are basically you know we're allowed to live but we're highly regulated and it's like a very locked down post-apocalyptic kind of police state in a way but it's you know, us trying to stay out of the way of the alien race. And there's only a few people that can actually go and communicate with them. Um, But they're occupying us. And it's about people that are trying to rise up. And the movie starts, it starts really good. There's there's parts of this movie that I enjoy. Overall, I felt it was kind of slow. And it's one of those movies where you know, similar to us in a lot of ways, where there's a lot of questions throughout the movie and then things are kind of explained and tied up at the end. Uh, but I, I just think it was a little bit too slow, a little bit too much, too many questions, maybe a little bit overly complicated. There's some people, like there's just some characters in this that are just kind of thrown in to be used. It just it just seems weak. There's just some, just not as well written uh, a movie clearly as us, but an interesting movie because it's it's basically taking a look at something that we do or countries do in a lot of places where we'll go into you know poor places like Africa and we enslave people to extract resources from them like the lithium that for our batteries and just these different things these precious metals that we use for our electronics those come from like places that are undeveloped and are being occupied by uh you know a more advanced collection of things um so this movie is what how it would feel for us you know it kind of takes place in in chicago uh, the movie opens with this family trying to escape uh, early in the like invasion and them not being successful in that, but two brothers uh, survive. One huge problem was the older brother that, I mean, spoilers, he's kind of this mythological guy, whatever. That's never really explained why he's mythological. Like he's this kind of, per- he, d- he supposedly died, but he's still Actually, he's still alive, which is a spoiler, but like they never really go into what he did that made him made people like want to immortalize him by painting him on buildings and stuff like that. That never really was fleshed out. The person that they the actor that they got to be the brother, it's like he looked like he went from a teenager to like 40 years old, even though it's like a 10 year difference in time like the the casting for the brother was just took me out took me out completely um and then there's like twists and turns because there's like people that are trying to shut down the the occupation but they're kind of coming at it from different perspectives and different angles and you know they're kind of working against each other uh instead of working together and it shows also why certain people become terrorists and become, you know, like defending, like we're invading other countries and other places and we're, we're, we're like wondering why we're getting shot at or suicide bombs. And I know there's some religious fundamentalism that goes into kind of their, their reasoning as well. But overall, if you occupy a place and you don't let people be free and you enslave them, then yeah, they're not going to be happy with what they are. So the movie tries to, you know, tries to get that kind of message in, sneak that message in. But overall I thought it was, thought it was pretty weak. Uh, I was kind of disappointed watching it. Uh, 
I had hoped it would be better. I, you know, I, sometimes with these movies you don't hear a lot about, you're not hearing people talk about. When I go to the theater to watch it, I hope it's like one of those gems, you know? I hope it's one of those, you know, maybe B-movie, but it has like this this awesome kind of aspect to it that was super original. This movie didn't really do anything new. Um, the The bomb technology they have is like... It's like trans it's like transparent so it's like even that was seemed overly complicated. There was just like I don't know. It's like a good idea, a good premise for a movie, but like the execution fell short I think. I mean, if this was produced by JJ and it was a a, a Cloverfield submission, I think it would have been tightened up better. Because I think storytelling wise, he does have that kind of, you know, mystery box element to his movies as well. But, and maybe he doesn't always kind of pull it all together at the end, but it's definitely more interesting throughout. Like, I never really feel bored watching a J.J. Abrams movie or production. Um, like where this one was kind of a drag. It's like, what are we doing here? What? It's just like, it just felt overly complicated for what they're doing. It's like, well, you got to do this, but why is you throwing all this? And then there's the tw these twists and turns that you don't really need to go down. And it just, uh, the acting again, the acting was okay, but the casting for that one brother, man, I swear. He's like, he's so old. He's so old. Like that guy would be more believable playing like an old Bill Cosby than like I would imagine he's supposed to be 20 in this. Like let's say like they're both kids when the attack happens, which is 10 years prior to the majority of this movie. So it's like let's say he's 18. He's 28 in this. He looks 48. He looks old. He's got like an old face or or he looks like Maybe he's in his late 30s, but also had an MMA career. Like, he kind of looks beat up in the face. So maybe that, but it, I just didn't. I was not feeling it. And it would be hilarious if maybe I just didn't realize that it's the same actor. But I think there were different actors for the younger and older versions. Um, but, yeah, the trailer made it look more interesting than it was, and it was a, ultimately a movie that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Even if it's on streaming, maybe. It wasn't a horrible movie, but it's not. There's, I don't really feel like there's anything to sneak, seek your teeth into or get out of this. Um, interesting, though. I like kind of flipping the thing to maybe try and make people feel more sympathy and empathy for the people that we're fucking over as a country. Uh, but, yeah, that's it for Captive State. Watch it if you want. It's not the worst thing you could do with your life, uh, but not the best either. There's, there's way better things. Uh, go watch 12 Cloverfield Lane, uh, directed or 10 Cloverfield Lane, directed by Dan Trachtenberg, host of the former Totally Rad show. Uh, you know, just a great movie, great direct. He's going to be doing the uh, fucking uh, video game movie coming up, Uncharted. I'm looking forward to that for sure, whenever that's coming out. Uh, new episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out daily. You can subscribe to the show. Do that on IGTV, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google, Stitcher, uh, Laughable. All, anywhere you listen to podcasts, search Ray Taylor Show. Hit subscribe. If you're more of the binging type and you want to binge the full week in advance, go over to patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder, and that is where you can become a member, binge the full week, and get a bunch of other benefits when you sign up. InspiredDisorder.com is where you can get my original artwork and old podcasts that I've done many of in the past. At Ray Taylor is where you can get at me on social media. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out!